You may be seated, and if you would turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 2, Mark chapter 2, my subject, your miracle moment. Today, some of you are facing a crisis, and a crisis can work for you, or a crisis can work against you. A crisis can cause you to invest in a miracle, and because of that, this is one of the greatest stories in the Bible that I've ever read. It's a great story to me because I had kidney stones years ago, and the Lord healed me when he gave me a rhema word out of this text. I've never had another kidney stone. I pray for many people have had kidney stones, and God has healed them. And so this is a great story. Mark chapter 2. Verse 1 says, And again he entered into Capernaum after some days. It was noise that he was in the house. Jesus was in the house. And immediately many that were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him bringing one sick. He was sick of the palsy. He was a lame man, which they bore carried by four. And when they could not come near unto him for the press, listen to this, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick, the lame man, lay. When Jesus saw their faith, you can literally see faith. When Jesus saw their faith, he saw the faith of the four men. He Saw that faith, he said unto the sick of palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Now, and the Pharisees were there, and they said, Only God can forgive sin. This man is blasphemed. Jesus said, Whether well, it's easier to say your sins be forgiven, or to say to the sick, Rise, take up your bed, and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power to forgive sin on earth. Look at this, Mark 2 and 11. I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thy house. And immediately he arose, took up his bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch they were all amazed. They were amazed, and they glorified God, saying, we've never seen it on this fashion. These people had never seen a miracle of this magnitude. But that did not limit God. Maybe you have never seen anyone healed of what you're going through. Maybe you've never seen anyone delivered by, and you're held by chains of bondage. That does not limit God. Jesus was in the house, and when these four men tore the roof off of that house, a miracle took place. My subject, your miracle moment. And the miracle is in the house. The miracle worker is in the house. His name is Jesus. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for the word of God, for the praise and worship for your people, Lord, and for every need that is here. Lord, I thank you for that because I learned years ago that when I thank you that things are just the way they are, I am headed for my suddenly, my sudden moment of your miracle working power. Seat us together in heavenly places. Hide me behind the cross. The Spirit of the Lord, David said, spoke through me. His words were in my mouth, and that's my prayer this morning, Father. Let your words be in my mouth. And the church said, in Jesus' name, amen. These four men in this story, they decided to carry their friend who was sick to Jesus. So they put him on a stretcher, and when they got to the house where Jesus was, it was impossible for them to get in because the crowd was so great. It might have been someone that, there that said, if Jesus wanted to heal your friend, he would have made room for him in the house. But this, nothing stopped these men. When they reached this point, they were faced with the crisis. And they said, do we pick him up and go back to where we came from, being denied what we thought we could receive from the Lord? Do we go back or do we begin to press in and draw close? to the master. So many people give up and they lay down on their insides and that's where they stay. Sometimes if it's not easy, people just succumb to the circumstances and they give up. But a crisis can work for you 
if you will let it, because a crisis can cause you to invest in a miracle. I like the attitude of these four men. They said, we've come too far. We've gone through too much. We've carried this thing too long to be denied. And that's the spirit and that's the attitude that needs to come over you when you need a miracle from God. There comes a time that you've got to have a made-up mind, that you've prayed too long, you've gone through too many obstacles, you've fought off too many devils, you've been through too many trials to turn back now. you got to say to yourself, I've carried this thing too long, and I'm not about to give up. And the Bible says that these men, when they were faced with their crisis, that they became even more radical in their faith. Hallelujah. They couldn't get in through the door, so they decided to go up on the roof and tear the roof off of that place and lower this man down through the roof. And this wasn't some little hole that they made in this ceiling, and it was not their ceiling either. Now, that's great faith to tear the ceiling or the roof off of someone else's property. They didn't put a little hole in that roof. They had to get a stretch about six foot long down through that roof. So I want you to get the picture. Jesus is in the house, and Jesus is preaching. And while Jesus is preaching, there's a commotion and a noise going up on the housetop. And all of a sudden, a hammer comes through the ceiling. And it's not a little hole they're making. They're knocking about a six-foot hole in that ceiling to let that man down into the presence of Jesus. And the chaos is all going on up on the roof. But Jesus just ignores them. And Jesus keeps on preaching. He didn't stop the service. He didn't send some of his disciples out to find out what was happening. He just totally ignored what was going on. And Jesus kept on preaching. Why did Jesus do that? It was because this crisis was going to show these men what was on the inside of them. And sometimes when you get in a crisis, it may seem like the Lord is ignoring you. You've been banging on the door of heaven. You've been beating on the door and you've been saying, Lord, help me. Yet it seems like he's ignoring what you're going through. The Lord wants to show you that out of your crisis, what is on the inside of you, because you will never know that you're an overcomer until you have something to overcome. I said you'll never know that you're an overcomer until you have something to overcome. And what you have to realize is this, that success and defeat, they have nothing to do with your circumstances. Circum success and defeat has everything to do with what is on the inside of you. And if you get Christ inside of you, you get the miracle worker working in all the circumstances of your life. Somebody go and praise him, hallelujah. You see, if you have a defeated spirit, you will give up over anything. You will give up because everything isn't perfect. You will give up because somebody criticized you. You will give up because someone misunderstood you. You will give up because you don't have enough money. But if you ever get victory on your insides, in your spirit, you won't ever give up. Hallelujah. And we don't need to give up. We need to press our way into God. We need to get into miracle territory. And when Jesus is in the house, I want to tell you something. You are in miracle territory. So whatever your need is, I want you to... Release your faith and look unto Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of your faith, because he's in the house, and this is your miracle moment. Somebody look at your friend and tell him, this is my miracle moment. I came for a miracle, and I will not be denied. So these men, they are ripping the roof off, and the roof speaks of the ceiling. It speaks of limitations. It speaks of the peak, and when you put a ceiling up, that means that's just as high as the top of this thing goes. So the roof was a type of limitation. 
And notice what these men had to do. This crisis made them rip the roof off of where Jesus was. And when you rip the roof off, the ceiling that's over your head, the ceiling is not the limit, but the sky is the limit. Hallelujah. Get God involved in the equations of your life. Make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior. You know, I, I was reading something, and the Lord spoke to me. Friday night was a, a radical night for me. A lot of changes came. My whole sermon got changed, and that and was already prepared. But, but God was speaking to him. And I went home, and the Lord spoke to me and said, If Jesus is not Lord, he is not your Savior. Well, that, that's pretty strong, isn't it? If Jesus is not your Lord, he is not your Savior. And the immediate, the Holy Ghost carried me to Revelation. Jesus said, I wish that you were hot. I wish you, you were cold. But since you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. He said, if you were cold, if you were a sinner, if you were a rank sinner and you knew you were a rank sinner, I could send my spirit and I could deal with your heart. If you were hot, then I know you're in hot pursuit of me, and I know you're going to seek me until you find me. But if you are lukewarm, if you think everything's okay, if you have need of nothing, he said, I cannot help you at all. And, and that's why Jesus is either your Lord or he is not your Savior. I don't want God to spew me out of his mouth. I want him to accept me with open arms. I want to come into his court with thanksgiving and to his presence with praise. Hallelujah. Praise is a weapon. And God wants us to praise him and worship him. And this means they ripped the roof off of this place. Do you know why God allows a crisis to come into our lives? Have you ever wondered that? In Sunday school this morning, Brother Philip said, I've asked God some whys. Well, why does God allow a crisis to come into our life? It is to force us to take the ceiling off of where Jesus has been in our life. You see, if you take the ceiling off of where Jesus is, he will take the ceiling off of where you are. Hallelujah. And this man, when he got to the house of God and into the presence of the Lord, this paralyzed man, he got his miracle. And Jesus fixed in a short time what had been, he had been going through for a long time. And you need to tell somebody, I am headed for my sudden season, and I'm in the miracle territory. This is my miracle moment, and I'm here to get in a short time relief from what I've been going through for a long time. Somebody go and praise God because Jesus is in the house. See, we serve a God where we can get up one day and we have a problem, and before the day is over, the problem is gone and the problem is over. You want some scripture for that? God spoke through the prophet Joel. He said, I will restore the years that the worms of sin have taken from you. He said, I'll give you a crash course. I'll make up in a moment of time what you've been going through a long time. That's what he did for me. After sin had paid its toe on my life, all of a sudden that nail-scarred hand touched me. I came out of darkness into the marvelous light, and all of a sudden my whole world changed. Somebody, you got that testimony? Go on and praise him. Thank him for what he's done. Thank him that you experienced the greatest miracle of all, that you've been born again, free from sin. That old song, those old songs are in me. One just floated up in Sunday school this morning. Born again, free from sin. I'm happy night and day, makes me shout, there's no doubt, I know I'm born again. You ever been born again? It'll change your whole world, hallelujah. My Lord, the only reason that this man in the story got healed was because these four men invested in a miracle and the miracle was in the house because Jesus was in the house. Now, here's where I got all messed up Friday night. How do we get Jesus in the house? And how do we invest in a miracle? I hope to answer those two questions this morning. I shared part of this with the Friday night prayer meeting. We are redeemed, church, by the blood of the Lamb. But to enter into God's presence, we need a fresh sprinkling of the blood. 
The sprinkling of the blood of Jesus qualifies you to enter into God's presence, into heaven itself, where God dwells. Like Smith Wigglesworth said, we have a leak, and we have to be filled and refilled with the Spirit. We're in a world where there's sin. It's not that necessarily you are sinning. It's just that the contamination of sin is weighing on your life. Therefore, the blood of Jesus has redeemed us, but we need a fresh application of the blood. We need to be sprinkled with the blood of Jesus daily. And I'm going to show you why that's so important this morning, I hope. Hallelujah. See, the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus qualifies us to enter into God's presence, into the place that he dwells. Look at Hebrews 10, 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter the holiest, the holiest of holiest, by the blood of Jesus, by a new and a living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. In that Old Testament, when Jesus cried, it is finished from the cross, God ripped the veil in two from top to bottom, showing that, that he, you have access into God's presence now. And Jesus, he shed his blood, put it on the mercy seat in heaven, and that's what gives us access to God. Look at verse 21. And having a high priest over the house of God, now I love this, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. We are sanctified by the blood of Jesus and made holy. We are sanctified and washed in the water of God's word. That's why you need good Holy Ghost preaching. That's why you need somebody that's been alone with God that can break the bread of life for you, and all of a sudden you say, "Woo, glory, he's talking to me. God's speaking to me. I'm hearing God this morning. Hallelujah. You want to hear God? Some people say, well, I, I, I never hear from God. Open this book, six to six books. Hallelujah. You want to hear from God? You'll learn how to praise him. You'll learn who he is. You'll learn who you are. You'll learn how to live your life. This book is the most powerful force on planet earth, hallelujah, because it's filled with the Spirit of God. And when you get God's Spirit involved in the equations of your life, eyes not seen, is not heard, is not even in the hearts of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. Do you love him? Then go and shout hallelujah. Do you love him? Shout praise the Lord. Do you need a miracle? Say thank you, thank you, Jesus, from my heart, hallelujah. Glory to God, my Lord. See, we live in a world of sin, and we need our conscience to be sprinkled with the blood. And we're invited into the throne room of God, into the very presence of God, into the glory of God. And the glory of God is all that God has and all that God is. The glory of God is the miracle working power of God. The glory of God is the very presence of God. Hallelujah. And this morning, we are experiencing his glory. My Lord. Jesus, the Bible says, is the brightness of his glory and expressed image of his person. If you want to know what God the Father's like, he's just like Jesus. Watch Jesus walk through the four gospels of this book, hallelujah, and you'll see him healing people, forgiving sin. He, he tells the prostitute, he says, your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. He tells the lame man, get up and walk. Woo, hallelujah. That man in my story went in with his back on his bed, come out with his bed on his back, shouting and praising God. Got a miracle from God because he got into the presence of Jesus. And you can get a miracle from God. And this is your miracle moment if you release your faith because God is here and Jesus is here and the Spirit is here. The blood gives us access to the throne room of the holiest of holies. Now that tells me that there are degrees of holiness according to our proximity to the throne. And that's why we need to be sprinkled by the blood. We live in a world of sin. And when our conscience is sprinkled by the blood, then it's purified, just like it was when we were first saved. You will never get any more righteous than you were when you were saved. You can't grow in righteousness. You grow in grace and knowledge. But there's a difference in righteousness and holiness. What is the difference, Pastor? Well, righteousness, that I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, 
It gives me access into the holiest of holies. Because I am righteous, I can go in just because you're righteous. You can go in just like Jesus can go in. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus is the brightness of God's glory and expressed image of his person. You need to remember that. And his blood gives us access into the throne room of the holiest of holies. We live in a world that's contaminated. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. We're looking for a city whose building makes us God. But while we're here, we need the sprinkling of the blood and the washing of the water of the word to sanctify us. And we're invited to come boldly to the throne of grace by a new and a living way, the blood of Jesus. It's the sprinkling of the blood, and it's the washing of the water of the word that cleanses us and makes us acceptable in the Father's presence. And holiness is a place. Holiness is a place because the Bible speaks of the holiest of holies. And when you come out of that place, the holiest of holies, you are filled with the glory of God and the presence of God. See, church, we have made holiness a moral code, a code of do's and don'ts. Now, some of you are struggling with some things, but if you can just see this one thing this morning, the chains, the shackles, they will fall off of your life. Let me just inject this. He heals the brokenhearted, and he binds up their wounds. So if your heart is broken, you're in a place for your miracle moment. Holiness is not something we do, but holiness is a place that we enter. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, by his own grace, he saved us. And you cannot make yourself holy. You can struggle with that habit. You can struggle and struggle and struggle. But until you get into his presence, hallelujah, and you realize that holiness is a place you will never get free. It's a spiritual place that we enter by being sprinkled in the blood of Jesus. And when you enter the throne room of God, you are made a partaker of God's holiness because Holiness is a place. Look at this. When Moses saw the burning bush that it was not consumed, he drew near to get a better look. And when he did that, he unknowingly stepped on holy ground. Why was that ground holy? It was because God's presence was in that place. And God's presence made that place holy. Once God left that place, that place was no longer holy. When Moses approached that bush, he stepped into holiness. And when he departed from that place, he stepped out of holiness. That place was holy only because God's presence was there. And the more you get into God's presence, the more of God's holiness you will experience. And the more of God's holiness you experience, the freer you will become. You'll be able to dance and shout. No more chains of slavery. Truth has triumphed. I have the victory for whom the Son makes free is free indeed. Hallelujah. If I got any people in here this morning that you're free, you've been redeemed by the blood, you've been sprinkled by the blood, and you know that you know and you're sure that you're sure that Jesus Christ is Lord of your life. The more you get into the presence of God, the more of God's miracle working power you will experience. The more you get into the presence of God, the more of God's provision you will receive. Jesus said, I am, don't get me mixed up with the devil. He said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, but don't get me mixed up with him. He said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He said, I know the thoughts I have for you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you a future, to give you a hope, to give you an expected end. You can know the end of this matter. Hallelujah. I read the book, and we win. Glory to God. Tell your neighbor, we win. I read the book. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. See, this paralyzed man that was healed in our text, he was healed when they tore the roof off. And they let that paralyzed man down into the presence of the Lord. And the presence of the Lord is here at Westmoreland. Simply because of one thing. We have prayed and sought God. Do you need another church growth technique, pastor? Do you need to go to another seminar? Do you need some smoke? 
He needs some dark clouds like the world that they're putting in some of our churches. No. I need him. I need his presence. You need his presence. You need the miracle working power of God. People are hurting. People are broken. They don't need some worldly fix. They need the power of God to invade their life. They need to come out of darkness into the marvelous light and press into God with all the heart, soul, mind, body, and strength and get your miracle. This is your miracle moment. Hallelujah. We pray all week. And in our prayer team, we come here on Friday night, and we pray. The Bible says the fire shall ever be burning on the altar. It shall never go out. We come in here, we take the old ashes. If you're going to keep a fire burning, you've got to remove the ashes. We get the old ashes out. Hallelujah. And we put fire on the altar. We pray that the fire of God will burn on these altars, that the presence of God will burn in this place. And our prayer team comes in. We've been doing that for 25 years. Hallelujah. If we can get here, we do it. We remove the old ashes. And we put fresh fire on the altars every week. And because of that, if you're lost, you can come into this place and get saved. Why? Because Jesus is in the house. Because of that, if you're bound by chains and shackles, He'll break every chain. Why? Because you got into the presence of God, and Jesus is in this house. Hallelujah. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost. You can be divinely healed. Why? Why are all of the miracles happening here at Westmoreland? Why are there so many testimonies of Jesus heal me? My Lord, here's a, a, a lady that died eight times. And she's sitting in church today. Stand up and give God a praise. Hallelujah. She literally died. And, and when she died, God showed her a picture of her when she was young. Then he showed her some black and white pictures. And she didn't get it at first. Said, what is that black and white picture, Lord? And the Holy Ghost told her, said, that's my word. That's the Holy Bible. And that's what I do for you. If you'll serve me and turn your faith loose. Somebody go and praise God. My Lord, that's Sister Skinner sitting back there. Sister Skinner, if you would ask her, what do you think about Jesus? Said, well, he's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Why is he so wonderful, Sister Skinner? Because I was in the hospital twice, and I was leaving this place, but Jesus sent somebody and prayed for me, and Jesus showed up, and I experienced my miracle moment, and I'm in the house of God today, 91 years of age. Oh, I'm going home someday, but he wasn't ready for me, and he healed me. Oh, my God. He, he heals people all the time in this place. He'll heal people any place if you get his presence there. It's in God's presence that we're sanctified and made holy and healed. Some of you are struggling with the do's and the don'ts of religion. But if you want to get free, you need to seek him. Because the more you seek God, the more of God's holiness you will experience. The closer you get to God's presence, the more the chains of bondage and addiction and sickness and disease will fall off of your life. The angels in the glory world, they're not holy because of who they are, but they are holy because of who God is. He is holy, holy, holy. And where they are, the four living creatures with eyes, they are in the presence of God day and night crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Where can you go and get away from the presence of God? Nowhere. But his manifest presence is not everywhere. But his manifest presence is here. Because we've been into the holiest of holies. We've been sprinkled by the blood. We've been washed by the word. And we come and put fire on the altars. Hallelujah. So people can come here and get their miracle. You don't have to get there first. Praise God. He'll send somebody after you. He sent 
four men to get this man that was paralyzed, and they transported him into miracle territory, into the presence of Jesus, and he was healed and experienced his miracle moment. Hallelujah. My Lord, God alone has holiness. He is the Holy One. But you are a chosen generation, your royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him that called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And anyone who enters God's presence, they are made partakers of his holiness. And if you get close enough to God, you will become holy. And it's not because of who you are, it's because of where you are. And we are invited to pray, to be sprinkled with the blood, washed in the water of the word, and enter into the holiest place of all, into the throne room of God. Hallelujah. You have to receive the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus. And because of the blood, you have boldness. That's what the Bible says, enter the holiest of holiest, into the very throne room of God. And holiness is not so much what I do, but it's what I do do. I do it God's way. Hallelujah. I get sprinkled by the blood. <laughs> and I step into the throne room of God. And when I do that, I am seated together in heavenly places with Christ. Holiness is not just the absence of sin. Holiness is the very presence of God. Do you sense his presence here today? Do you sense the spirit of God that's touching you right now? If you do, it's because you have entered into his holiness because he is here. And the presence of God and the glory of God is all that God is and all that God has. It's the miracle working power of God. And he is here presence of God. And I raise a hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, Jesus revealed to us that the angels, what do they do? Well, they just mostly stand before God. They're all ministering spirits, but what do they do? They just stand mostly before God. Look at Matthew 18, 10. Jesus said, take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that heaven, that in heaven, the angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Now, Gabriel, the archangel, he appears to Zacharias, and he said, I'm Gabriel who stands in the presence of God. Well, Gabriel, what do you do? I stand in the presence of God. Well, I understand that. But what do you do? I stand in the presence of God. I understand that, Gabriel. You're an angel, but what do you do? He said, you're not getting it, Zach. This is what I do. I stand in the presence of God. And if he tells me to do something, I do it. And I've been sent to tell you something. And he didn't even believe an angel from the glory world. And he got locked, y'all, and couldn't speak. Amen. But when he recovered in his faith, hallelujah, they said, what, what's his name going to be? He's the, the, the dad of John the Baptist. He said, his name is John, not shall be John. He said, there's nobody in, in your family with a name like that. That angel really got his attention. He said, why John? He said, his name is John, period. Hallelujah. And that's what you need to do is get something in your spirit inside of you that said, I am what God said I am. I have what God said I have. I can do what God said I can do. And I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Hallelujah. Gabriel appears three times in the scriptures. The first time he appeared to Daniel. Then about 600 years later, he appeared to Zacharias. And about six months later, he appeared to the Virgin Mary. What was Gabriel doing all of those silent years? He was standing in the presence of God. He was standing on holy ground. He was standing 
in holiness. And the goal of our life should be found standing in the presence of God and standing on holy ground. Why holiness? Because God makes us available to do service for him when we live holy. Holiness empowers us. Holiness allows us to have life and have it more abundantly. Holiness gives us authority with men, with heaven, and over all the power of the devil. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And the only way to gain authority with God is to get sprinkled in the blood and to stand before him in holiness. It's all about faith, church. It's about faith in the blood. It's about faith in the finished work of Christ. It's about faith because faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ, it says something to the Father. It says, I believe in a sinless, perfect life that Jesus lived that and that he died and he shed innocent blood. It was pure blood. It was holy blood. It was God's blood. And that blood has the power to redeem. And that power has the blood to heal. And that power is available to you. I believe Jesus died. I believe he took my place. I believe he bore my sins. I believe he took it away from me and suffered my punishment. I believe he took stripes on his back. And I believe that he took sickness and disease away from me. And by his stripes I was healed I believe in Jesus I love that confession of faith and I say it again I am who God said I am I have what God said I have I can do what God said I can do and I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me hallelujah you have been ushered into the very presence of God this morning. Look at somebody and tell them. This. Is my miracle moment. Your crisis. Can work for you. And it can push you. Into your miracle moment. So what pastor. Is a miracle moment. A miracle moment. Is when Jesus fixes things in a short while. That you've been going through for a long time. One touch from the hand of Jesus healed that paralyzed man. And he got up and he walked away. And the only reason that man was healed was because Jesus was in the house. And Jesus is in this house. And this is your miracle moment. When God changes my message, I know he has someone that he wants to deliver. I know he has a miracle moment for someone. I know that your miracle is in the house because Jesus is in the house. The only question is, will you get up and by faith make your way to Jesus and say, Lord, I'm ripping the roof off. I'm taking the ceiling off of where I am. I believe the sky's the limit and you have better things for me than what I'm going through. Let us stand. Hallelujah. He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. He is here. Press in. Holy, holy. I will bless. Raised from the dead eight times. He's here. here. Listen, Listen closely. closely. You hear him calling your name? Him call at your name. He, he is here. You can touch him. You will never be. 
the same. He is here. See, when we start this journey, sometimes we just fail. We mess up. Sometimes we feel so unworthy. It has nothing to do with your worthiness. It has everything to do with the blood of Jesus. That Jesus has qualified you and made you worthy to receive a miracle from his hand. Keep pressing in, Sister Henderson. Pretty soon that cane will be gone. Glory. Woo! Be made whole in Jesus' name. Maybe you don't understand her hallelujahs. Well, she walks with a cane most of the time. But look at her. Come on, Sister Henderson. Walk in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Walk, I said. Walk in Jesus' name. Glory. Raise a hallelujah. Raise a hallelujah. Take the limits off of God. Make your way to Jesus. Hallelujah. I mean, these four men had to carry their friend and tear the roof off the place. Some of y'all, you got to do to get your miracle is that's right. Walk on down and get it. God's been talking to you the whole time. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Robert. <laughs> He's been waiting for you, brother. Woo! Hallelujah. He's been waiting on you, Robert. Glory. This is your miracle moment. Lord, I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, you heal anybody that comes to you. And Lord, Robert, he's come of his own free will. He's taken the roof off, Lord. And the doctors, they can't do anything. Look at me, Robert. Say, Jesus, I know I'm saved. He is here. But I'm drawing near. Hallelujah. I'm going into the throne room. Sprinkle me with your blood. I need a fresh application. Amen. And heal me, Lord, he by the stripes here. that you took on your back. Holy, by holy, your stripes, I am healed. I am whole. I receive it. Receive it in Jesus' name. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. He is here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm making my way to Jesus I'm pressing in to him and I'm thanking God for my miracle moment hallelujah hallelujah Woo. <laughs> hallelujah 